assalamu alaikum i am wajiha ikram roll number 319 from batch 31 fourth year mbbs king edward medical university we will give a presentation of an, on our research article the title is post covid 19 long haul syndrome it's a systematic review first of all amna nisar will continue the abstract i'm amna nisar role number 316 i'm going to present the abstract abstract background people with post covid 19 conditions may experience a wide range of symptoms lasting from 3 weeks to 6 months covid 19 is an acute disease in humans caused by corona virus it was originally identified in china in 2019 and later became a pandemic covid 19 affects billions of people worldwide and almost and most of the recovered patients show post covid 19 effect objectives This systematic review aimed at estimating the effects of post covid 19 also called long haul syndrome because of pub, uh, because of published literature that studied prolonged clinical presentation in long haulers methods relevant data based were searched for article extraction articles containing original work both qualitative and quantitative were searched for relevant content results of the total 2920 articles from initial research 20 were finalized to be studied for this systematic review all the studies were based on hospitalized and non hospitalized covid-19 patients with proper follow up history for more than a month these study participants have multifaceted effects more than 35 types of symptoms and multi organ involvement in various diseases conclusion the incidence of multifaceted effect of post covid-19 has continued to impact the victims for weeks or months these involved multi organ diseases and need multidisciplinary care and proper follow up treatment keywords post covid 19 long haul syndrome long haulers effect of post covid 19 Uh, I am Hina Shakur, batch thirty-one, uh, roll number thirty-two, three twenty-two. I will present the introduction. A long haul syndrome is a set of conditions that persists for more than four weeks after a confirmed diagnosis of COVID. As COVID nineteen, named SARS COVID nineteen due to its resemblance with SARS COVID nineteen, shows high mortality rate in two thousand two and three, first and then worldwide outbreak in December two thousand nineteen onward. just like covid 19 uh, uh, diverse symptomology the post covid 19 syndrome also exhibit a diverse clinical uh, spectrum including respiratory which includes fatigue shortness of breath sore throat uh, cardiovascular uh, problems such as chest pain palpitations tachycardia uh, physical other uh, symptoms include arthritis myalgia weak, weakness and neurocognitive uh, function uh, abnormalities such as sleep disorders anxiety mood swings cognitive impairment and multi organ failure there are certain uh, criteria defining long haul syndrome or post covid 19 syndrome it may be defined as no recovery after um, symptoms appear for weeks to months regardless of confirmatory diagnostic testing Uh, there is an estimated that the SARS COVID nineteen impact billions of people worldwide across two hundred countries, since a large population is at risk of developing long haul COVID nineteen. Hence, it's a global, uh, globally addressed issue of public health. Victims suffer from a functional impairment, low quality life, decrement, and encumbered socio economical status as well, leading to despair and collapse. Despite uh, emerging issues on massive level, there. are no proper defining grounds for labeling confirmed diagnosis nor thorough treatment of it yet so however the potential uh, interventions alongside research trials are underway targeting the underlying causes of emerging complication 
This review will be a nutshell of guiding uh, information covering maximum dimensions from the basis of disease to multi-factor effect. It will be a milestone in understanding It will be a milestone uh, um, in understanding the influence of the disease on mental and physical agony of long haulers. The objectives and rationales to determine the effect of long haul syndrome. And the second systemic review covers the implicit plunge on the extent of the post COVID-19 effects and their further consequences. I am Faisal Bidur, role number three and five, and I will present the methodology section. First, the study design. A systematic review was conducted in accordance with the preferred reporting items for the systematic review and meta-analysis, i.e. the PRISMA guidance. Second, the study population, which included COVID-19 victims who showed clinical symptoms for weeks to months after recovery. The duration of systematic literature search was done from March 2022 till October 2022. Coming on to the data collection, a comprehensive search of databases has served, including PubMed, Medline, and Park Medinet. Initially, all articles related to long haul syndrome were collected. No filter in terms of time, study design, language, and country of publication was used to retrieve all published literature. All, av all available data was later defined according to inclusion exclusion criteria. Search results citation were downloaded to Zotero. Two reviewers, Vijay Ikram and Ahmed independently performed data extraction and synthesis to remove any possible discrepancies. While the third review, Mohammed Asif cross checked the entries for accuracy and completeness. My, my name is Mohammed Ahmed, batch 31, row number 331. Uh, the inclusion criteria for these were the articles will be either in English language or there will be a translation available. Studies on victims of COVID-19 showing symptoms of four weeks to months after negative COVID-19 screening test. Only original research articles like RCTs and cohort would be studies included. Exclusion criteria. Review articles, editorials, case reports, case studies will not be included. Articles in languages other than English titles that did not match ours. Duplicate articles and incomplete articles. Uh, in this PRISMA flow chart, a total number of 2920 research were uh, obtained and uh, 540 duplicates were removed, leaving 2380 articles. After that, 2120 were removed because uh, they were of during COVID studies instead of post COVID. So the remaining 2260s uh, articles were uh, screened. And out of these, 223 articles were behind a paywall or the full text was not available. So uh, we were remaining of 37 articles. Out of each, 17 were removed because they were not original studies or they were not directly related to our topic. So a total of 20 research articles were selected for our study. Uh, results, a total of 2,920 articles were obtained for this review. After removing duplicates, uh, 2,380 articles undergo title and full text availability screening. 37 publications were evaluated for eligibility and 17 studies were excluded because of they contained unoriginal research and were not directly related to the topic. According to our inclusion exclusion criteria that we were set uh, in this research article, the screening process ended up with a total 20 articles, excluding all the acute COVID-19 symptomatology based articles. Hence, 20 articles were studied for final analysis and review and their general characteristics of uh, are added in table one. A total of six studies were from Bangladesh, Victoria, Mexico, China, Nigeria, and Mediterranean regions. Other include the US, UK, and different populations. All the studies were based on hospitalized and non-hospitalized COVID-19 patients with proper follow-up history for more than a month. Uh, 
These study participants have multifaceted effects, more than 35 types of symptoms, and multi organ involvement in various diseases. The results demonstrated that the patients experienced post COVID 19 symptoms with post viral fatigue being the most common mentioned in 17 studies out of 20. Fatigue, dyspnea, memory loss, concentration problems, and sleep issues were the most commonly reported chronic complaints. Patients started having anxiety or depression. A small percentage of participants reported experiencing more severe symptoms such as stroke, renal failure, myocarditis, and even pulmonary fibrosis. The severity of the condition was associated with the existence of other comorbidities. The intensity of post COVID 19 symptoms was associated with the severity of COVID 19. Uh, I am Vishnu Roll Number C One Eight. I will present the discussion of our systemic review. In the systemic review, a total of twenty studies were included, which meet the inclusion criteria. More than thirty-five signs and symptoms of post-COVID nineteen were identified during the study. Majority of the symptoms were familiar to the early presentation of acute COVID nineteen. However, the possibility to identify more and more effects later in long haulers remained there. The most important and alarming effects seen among long haulers are due to endothelial damage, microvascular injury during their acute attack of the coronavirus, the direct viral toxicity later causes immune system dysregulation, hyperinflammation, and hypercoagulability states in long haulers. This systemic review demonstrated that post-COVID-19 syndrome affected most of the systems of the human body. and this discussion elaborates on the maximum number of the diseases of an organ system involved i am vijay hikram roll number 319 i will explain the characteristics of all the 20 studies included in our systematic review first of all the first study uh, consists of 384 patients that were hospitalized and the reporting time was average of 58 days the alarming symptoms reported in them were the risk increased risk of thrombosis and lung fibrosis next the study two were about self managed patients 487 patients were in total it is a cross sectional study and reporting time is 3 months and the most common symptom shown by these patients were breathlessness upon the little exertion when we perform 6 minute walk test then study third was about hospitalized discharged patients it is a case series and reporting time is 60 days and the prominent alarming symptom uh, among 143 patients in this study were interstitial pneumonia next study four was uh, a cohort study conducted in bangladesh uh, it was about uh, impaired pulmonary diffusion capacities and sleep difficulties and uh, consist of 1733 patients the next uh, study number 5 was prospective cohort study uh, reporting time was 1 month for the 355 patients the most alarming symptom was post viral fatigue and myalgic encephalomyelitis next study uh, was about psychiatric patients and uh, the most common complaint of them was fatigue and anhedonia it was about 200 patients then next study number 7 was about recovered covid-19 patients complaining of obsessive compulsive disorder and it consists of 287 patients in total next study number 8 the, uh, is about victorian population with smell and taste loss it is a retrospective descriptive study reporting time was 83 days and the alarming symptoms were comorbidities like obstructive sleep apnea inflammatory bowel disease and hypertension it consists of 150 patients Then next study number nine was about hospitalized discharge patient. Reporting time was one ten days, and the most common complaint seen in these two seventy nine patients was loss of hair. Then study number ten was about Mediterranean post COVID nineteen patients. The reporting time was ten to fourteen weeks, and it is a cohort study. The most alarming symptom was lymphopenia and somia. Ah, uh, in two seventy seven patients were assessed. Next study number eleven reporting time was sixty uh, days and uh, it is a descriptive clinical follow up mainly and uh, the symptoms include emotionally symptoms like and cardio pulmonary problems. It is uh, consist it consists of four eighty eight patients in total. 
Next study number 12 was about discharge COVID-19 patients. It's the cross-sectional evaluation and reporting time was 21 to 71 days. And it uh, consists of 100 patients for, and most common symptom was breathlessness and psychological distress reported. Next study number 13 was a prospective cohort study and reporting time was more than 28 days. <clears throat> The most common symptom shown in this study was insomnia and dyspnea, and it consists of 558 patients. Then study number 14 was non-critical COVID-19 patients and reporting time was nine months. Uh, it, it, consists, it is a descriptive clinical follow-up and uh, the symptoms uh, seen in 150 patients studied in this was weight loss, palpitations, and insomnia. Then study number 15, recovered patients in Mexican population. The reporting time was 31 to 60 days. It's a cross case control study. And uh, alarming symptoms uh, seen in this study was multi-organ manifestations like GIT problems, kidney, heart collateral damage, etc. And the next study number 16, it's COVID-19 survivors in Wuhan. It's a cross-sectional study and reporting time was more than Three months patients in total were 538 and alarming symptoms reported in this study was increased resting heart rate and post-activity polypnea. Then study number 17 was a systematic review and uh, patient, uh, the report was uh, shown immune system dysregulation in this review. Study number 18, reporting time was six months and survive, it's about survivors of COVID-19. It's a retrospective cohort study and uh, symptoms shown in this study was neurological and psychiatric symptoms. Uh, other than that, stroke, hemorrhage, anxiety, etc. It consists of a large number of patients, like 236,379 patients were in total. Then study number 19, reporting time was 80 to 97 days. It was about in UK. It was conducted in UK. Uh, UK prospective cohort study. Uh, symptoms were breathlessness and insomnia, most commonly reported and consist of 110 patients. Then study number 20, it's a con case control study COVID among COVID-19 survivors in Nigeria. Common symptoms include increased blood coagulability and fatigue. It consists of 274 patients. My name is Asad, role number 338. The most common symptom among dong herders were tiredness, body ache, and fatigue. Among hospitalized discharges, 85% suffer from fatigue and tiredness. Other symptoms, which were neuropsychiatric in nature, migraine, insomnia, restlessness, depression, and dementia. The pulmonary symptoms include dyspnea and cough. Other constitutional symptoms include weight loss and hypertension. Cardiovascular diseases include an increased risk of thrombosis, palpitations, flushings, and hypertension. Critical disorders like myocarditis and uh, stroke were also reported. Uh, Musculoskeletal symptoms include uh, muscle cramping, alopecia, arthralgia, skin rashes, and restless leg syndrome. My name is Arham Ashraf, uh, role number 341. From now onwards, I'll be discussing the limitations. Uh, our systematic review had several limitations. One is the small number of including studies with underpowered sample sizes and variation in defined outcomes leading to the heterogeneity of the results. Many studies used a self-reporting method which can produce an intra-observer bias and almost all studies enrolled COVID-19 patients in mild, moderate, and severe disease categories while with variable follow-up time references. This can produce heterogeneous results as well. And although the high viral load is implicated in the long-term sequelae of COVID-19, there is no definition of the effect of late effects of COVID-19 and its associated symptoms. A critical illness survivor can have prolonged symptoms while a patient with mild disease can recover early from the same problem. Uh, that's all from our batch. Thank you.